Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be creating the Trappist 1 system using Universe Sandbox Square. We're going to use the very realistic parameters and create the system that will look as realistic as possible and we'll get to see what it actually looks like compared to our own solar system as well. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So even though Universe Sandbox Square already has a huge database of various planets, various systems and various stars and also exoplanets as well, it doesn't yet have the newly discovered uh, TRAPPIST-1 system created, so we need to make our own from scratch. We do have the TRAPPIST-1 uh, star, however, which we can actually add uh, by typing TRAPPIST here and it will show up right away. We're going to place it, it's uh, listed as a red dwarf type M8. And it does have a relatively accurate parameters here. So basically it is about 83.8 masses of Jupiter. It's essentially just a little bit bigger than Jupiter in terms of um, the size. So this is what Jupiter would look like. But it's much, much more massive. It's 84 uh, ma more, times more massive than Jupiter. So it is a star. It's not a brown dwarf. It's an actual ultra cool star. As in very, very cold. Not that it's super cool. And its surface temperature here is about um, 2500 degrees Kelvin, although I think in reality it's a little bit lower. Now, to add all of the planets that we've discovered last year, we can just click on this Add Planet to Stars. And there you go. There's three planets that have been added to the TRAPPIST system. You, you'll notice that they're actually orbiting very funny. Uh, it's because their inclination is actually has been discovered to be about 89 degrees um, in comparison to our own system. So there is the inclination for all of these three planets. TRAPPIST-1b, TRAPPIST-1c are too close to the star. So they're very likely um, actually outside of the habitable zone. Whereas TRAPPIST-1d, turns out that it's not just one planet, but it's actually at least three separate objects. So let's uh, create this from scratch. Uh, these two are already with uh, relatively accurate parameters. We're just going to double check that their masses are actually correct. And we're going to do this using the uh, parameters available to you for free on a website known as TRAPPIST.1. It's a website set up just specifically for this particular system. So TRAPPIST-1b, which is the planet that we have right here, is very likely a very, very hot world with about 0.85 masses of Earth, 1.1 radius of Earth, uh, much lower density or slightly lower density than Earth, and thus lower density than Mercury, which also suggests that it's probably mostly rock, not as much metal, and it's very unlikely that it has any water on the surface as well because it's a little bit too close to the parent star. It's also uh, tidally locked, uh, so one side is always facing the star, and so one side is always very, 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 very hot, and the other side is probably very, very, very cold. And a single orbit here takes only one point, uh, I think it's 1.5 days, so let's double check, 1.51 days. It's uh, slightly eccentric with about 8% eccentricity, similar to uh, some of the planets in our solar system as well. And um, all of the inclinations for all of the uh, planets here will be about 89.4 degrees. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is how close is it to the actual star? So the distance here is about 0.011 um, astronomical units, which is essentially 11% of the distance of Earth to the uh, Sun. Um, so it's much, much closer to the star than Mercury. TRAPPIST-1c, the next uh, planet, is also going to be very hot. And it's also tidally locked to uh, the TRAPPIST star. And uh, here, uh, what makes this particular planet different and kind of interesting is that it actually has relatively high density. Uh, so the temperature here is, according to the simulation, is currently 67 degrees Celsius. So it's a little bit hotter than what you would want it to be and possibly even more hot if there's any atmosphere on the surface. Uh, but um, this is definitely not going to be an, a very easy world to inhabit, but there's some really cool things about it. First of all, it's about 1.38 masses of Earth, so it's more massive than Earth, it's a little bit larger than Earth, and it's a little bit more dense than Earth. This suggests that it actually has very, very high uh, metal content on the inside. And this, of course, suggests that this particular planet might actually exhibit a very powerful magnetosphere. 
In other words, it might actually be protected from the star that it orbits by a very powerful magnetosphere that's generated inside the planet. Now, what this means is that maybe, just maybe, there is actually some kind of boiling water on the surface. There's also possibly um, some sort of a atmosphere here. So let's just add a little bit of atmosphere to it. But if there is atmosphere, this also suggests that there might be actually uh, quite a lot of greenhouse effect making this planet even hotter. So it might be as hot as 100 degrees Celsius or the temperature of boiling water. So TRAPPIST-1C, despite being so exciting in terms of other parameters, including, of course, its um, orbital parameters of 2.42 days, eccentricity of about 8%, and... Um, essentially being relatively close to the star, but not close enough to be extremely hot. It still is very likely just outside of the habitable zone, still in the very hot region of this solar system. Now, TRAPPIST-1D and 1E are a little bit more exciting. First, let's look at uh, TRAPPIST-1D. Now, this one is also very likely tidally locked, so we're going to tidally lock it. But as you can see, it already has a bit of liquid water. Um, the problem is that it's possible that it doesn't have enough iron, and the reason we know that is because even though its mass is about um, 0.4 masses of Earth and its radius is about 0.7 radius of Earth, its density is lower than Earth. So there might not be enough iron, enough metal on the inside to circulate to create the magnetosphere. If there is no magnetosphere, this suggests there is no atmosphere and also suggests that there is no water. Whether there is water here or not, maybe one day we'll discover by using other telescopes, but for now we can assume that there is no water simply because the magnetosphere is not present to protect this planet from various uh, flare eruptions that TRAPPIST-1, uh, which is a star of course, would often exhibit. So this is TRAPPIST-1D, and if you want to take a look at its uh, orbital parameters, its semi-axis or its distance to the star is about 0.02 astronomical units, its eccentricity is 7%, um, and its orbital period, or one year here, is about 3.93 days, or basically close to about 4 days. Now, the next two planets in the TRAPPIST system are kind of exciting, mostly because they're located uh, pretty much in the middle of the habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone. This is where you would expect to have liquid water. Now, TRAPPIST-1E, let's look at its parameters. So, its uh, mass is about 0.6 masses of um, our Earth, and its radius is uh, about 0.9%, uh, or about, sorry, 92% um, radius of, of our Earth. In comparison to Earth, this is what it looks like. So, in terms of size and, and mass, it's similar, but it's less dense. Um, this, once again, suggests that maybe, just maybe, the magnetosphere here, if it exists, is not very strong. So... If it does exist, though, it might protect this planet from um, from the powerful uh, streams of various ionized particles that are coming from TRAPPIST and thus create some sort of a atmosphere that might be able to actually support liquid water and, of course, um, thick atmosphere on the surface of this planet. But we don't really know if this is true and we won't really find out for quite a while. But let's just add water just for fun to imagine that it's going to be a water world. However, the temperature here is relatively cold, and that's because we just didn't create enough greenhouse effect for this planet just yet. Now, um, this one is actually probably one of the best uh, chances for us to find any kind of a habitable world in this system, uh, mostly because it's just in the right region, but it's still maybe a little bit too small to have a powerful magnetosphere to protect it from the star. TRAPPIST-1F, very similarly, is actually... Um, Oh, look at the temperature. Very, very warm. But I think it might actually be falling over time. Anyway, so um, the uh, parameters here are about 0.68 masses of um, our Earth. Uh, it's a little bit larger than Earth in terms of radius. So it, it's clearly a lot less dense. And once again, this means that the, there's less metal on the inside, less magnetosphere. And so liquid water might actually be just a science fiction in this case. There might be nothing on the surface. And it even might not even have any um, atmosphere, even though I decided to create some here. The reality might be this. It might be actually completely free of atmosphere, simply because, once again, the powerful uh, streams of different uh, flare emissions from TRAPPIST-1 would strip this um, planet entirely of all of the atmosphere. It would be absolutely empty. 
However, maybe on the opposite side of the planet, there might be some ice and stuff that accumulates over time. But we wouldn't be able to survive there because it's just a little bit too cold. And don't forget, all of these planets are actually tidally locked to the star. So all of them have very similar parameters and very similar um, features on the surface. Basically, every single one of these planets will have very dry, very sort of hot environment here, uh, possibly completely scorched in some cases. Then there is going to be the twilight area that's going to possibly have liquid water, but very unlikely. And then there's going to be the dark side that's always in the dark, always, always frozen, always super cold. So all seven of these planets will have these because uh, we are pretty certain, like 99% certain, that they're all tidally locked. Alright, so this was 1F. Then we have uh, the planet 1G, which is a little bit farther away, but still in the relatively um, habitable area. And so here, uh, this actually might be another very interesting planet. Uh, the reason why it's interesting is that its radius is about 1.12 radi radii of Earth. And its mass is about 1.34 masses of Earth. So this particular planet is quite as dense as, uh, let's say, Venus. Um, this suggests that maybe it has liquid iron core. So this might be actually all of this liquid iron core on the inside. And this also might suggest that there is a magnetosphere. So we're going to give this planet a magnetosphere. But there is a problem, of course. And the problem is that um, even if there is a magnetosphere here, this planet is a little bit too far from the TRAPPIST-1 star to actually um, have an, uh, enough temperature to maintain liquid water. So it's possible that here everything is going to be basically kind of frozen-ish. I'm going to give it some water. Actually, a lot of water. But as you can see, it's all going to be frozen even if I give it quite a lot of atmosphere. Let's actually give it like really, really thick atmosphere that we're going to assume is going to uh, survive the hostility of um, of the parent star despite it being the red dwarf that usually has a lot of flare emissions one just actually happened you kind of saw it erupting from that side right there so uh, even with the thick atmosphere it's very likely it's not going to be warm enough we're going to wait a little bit but i don't think it's going to warm up enough or oh, actually never mind i spoke too soon it totally has enough temperature uh, or enough greenhouse effect to warm up quite dramatically and to melt this liquid water here. Um, but the problem is that this is with three uh, pressures of atmosphere. In other words, three times the atmosphere on the surface of our planet Earth. To maintain this atmosphere, this has to uh, this planet has to have a really, really powerful magnetosphere. The magnetosphere here has to be more powerful than on Earth because um, otherwise the TRAPPIST-1 system or TRAPPIST-1 star would actually strip everything from the surface here. Um, so let's just assume that maybe it does have magnetosphere and maybe there is water. So this would be actually one of the better opportunities for us to find a new home outside of our solar system. And lastly, we have TRAPPIST 1H, and this one is actually this planet is actually kind of far away from everything, so it's very likely to be just an ice bowl if there is water, or to be just a very cold non-ice bowl if there is no water. Um, and the parameters here are uh, we don't really know its mass, but we know that it's about 0.75 radii of um, Earth. We don't really know its density, but we know that it orbits um, the star every 20 days. And the um, distance from the star is about 0 0.063 astronomical units. And you can see this under here. So this is about um, 9,431,800 kilometers in distance. So this is probably not a habitable world, but it, nevertheless, it's an Earth-like planet as well. So of all of these planets, let's actually see which one has the highest Earth similarity. So this parameter right here. So TRAPPIST-1H is 0.63, TRAPPIST-1G is 0.914 with about 19% chance for life, TRAPPIST-1F 0 0.862, 0 0.92, and look at that, 44% chance of life on TRAPPIST-1E. This is right in the middle of the habitable zone. 1D has a 0.9 um, similarity, 0.694 for TRAPPIST-1C, and the last one is 0.77. So many of these planets are very, very similar to Earth, so it really all depends on the magnetosphere. If there's magnetosphere, chances for life and liquid water and atmosphere are very, very high. If there is no magnetosphere, chances are very low. Now, one thing I want to mention before actually finishing this video is the idea of uh, temperature equilibrium. This is essentially a principle where if I were to put a planet somewhere right here, let's say we'll put Mercury, um, 
what would be the actual temperature assuming that this body does not have atmosphere does not have any greenhouse effect what would be the temperature on the surface if it basically receives all of the starlight from from the sun uh, from from its star now for earth that that equilibrium is about 260 degrees kelvin the actual temperature on earth though is much warmer it's about 35 degrees warmer meaning that the greenhouse plays a very important role um so for all of these planets we were actually able to find this equilibrium temperature and there is a bit of a speculation we can make about them so for trappist 1b that temperature is too high which means that this planet is ridiculously hot so is this one this planet is very likely going to be very hot because even without the um, greenhouse effect the temperature here the uh, equilibrium temperature is 340 degrees kelvin which is close to about 70 or over 70 degrees celsius so it's going to be very toasty to live here trappist 1d however and um, and the other next one trappist 1e have very comfortable temperatures here it's 288 degrees which is very close to 260 on our planet earth and here it it's about 251 which is slightly below earth's 260 so if these two planets here have atmosphere and if these two planets have magnetosphere they're not only going to be habitable, but they're also going to be very, very, very strong candidates for us to find life on them. These two planets are very important. Now, TRAPPIST-1F and TRAPPIST-1G have slightly lower temperatures of 219 and 198 Kelvin, meaning that they need to have very strong atmosphere on top of the magnetosphere to actually be candidates. And, well... That's really it. That's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to create TRAPPIST system. I wanted to talk about various properties and various parameters that we've discovered. And also I'm going to show you where it's actually located in relation to our star. If we go right here into nearest hundred stars, we're going to open the simulation that has essentially all of the nearest stars near us. And about 15% um, of them are actually these ultra cool dwarfs similar to TRAPPIST-1. If you look around long enough, you might actually be able to spot it uh, because it's not very far from us. It's only about 39 light years away. So let's look for it right now. And so at a distance of about 39 light years away, there it is. You can kind of see it right here. Um, this is actually a manually placed star because I just realized this particular simulation has not been updated since 2012. So you might not be able to find it here. But I wanted to put the star in there just to give a comparison to some of the other stars in terms of the actual distance. So here's the infamous Alpha Centauri with the Proxima Centauri right next to it, right there. This is the other red dwarf that uh, was um, the center of attention last year when we discovered another Earth-like planet known as Proxima B around it. This is about 4.2 light years away, and that's about 39. It's about 10 times as far. But nevertheless, that's still pretty close in terms of space distances. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully now you know what TRAPPIST looks like. You, hopefully you've discovered a little bit more about this fascinating system, and now you know what we might discover there one day as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Come back tomorrow. You're going to learn something else, something very interesting, something related to space sciences, sciences, math, or maybe something different. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon and definitely subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching this stuff and wants to learn even more. I'll see you guys later. Space out. Bye bye. Now, how can I finish this video so that you are actually absolutely fascinated by these videos in the future? Uh, hmm. Let's think about this for a second. How about we? make this go supernova these stars don't actually go supernova but this is a game where i can totally do that right there we go now let's look at the supernova from our own system and see what it would look like had it actually happened one day not that it will because like i said these stars don't go supernova and now if i accelerate time you'll see that it's slowly increasing in size and look at that so beautiful appearing in the skies in front of us and it's slowly heading that way and it's probably going to destroy everything on its in its path. Oh well, I've destroyed the universe or at least our solar system yet again.